this is the concert, and there's only 35 or 36 Vermeers in the world, depending on who you listen to. The National Gallery of Art has one. They debunked it. They say now it's not, but the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam uh, doesn't agree with them, so they're not in agreement. So 35 or 36 is a very small number of works compared to like a Rembrandt. Um, this painting has a woman playing a harpsichord, a man with a lute, and another woman that appears to be singing. It might have, they used to believe it had an erotic undertone and might have been a brothel, a high-end brothel. This is the old belief. And there is a painting in the painting, you, you see here, Dirk Van Baberen's, um The Procurus, if I could find it. And it shows a woman with a lute, the client, and a woman telling them, you gotta pay, right? And it kind of mimics, because here's woman playing man, and another woman like this. And there's this instrument. So there are instruments in Dutch art back then, and music did have erotic undertones. This shows up in four paintings by Vermeer, including the music lesson, always on the floor. So we don't know exactly what he meant, but here's a tranquil scene on the harpsichord. Nowadays, a lot of experts don't believe, they believe that that Van Baberen was a, this is a tranquil scene, and that was a warning against excesses of lust and, and eroticism. And they point to the fact that, uh, by the way, this painting was in his family. His mother-in-law, Maria Tins, owned that. And it ends up in, this is in two of Vermeer's paintings, that Van Baberen, he liked it. But, so they, it, that family was really devoutly Catholic, and, and so they're really not sure exactly what this means. On this scene, the storm of Galilee, everyone loves the parrot. This is one of his greatest paintings. I love it. Everyone loves it. It's amazing. It's a shame it got cut from the frame. They literally butchered it. So these guys were really hardened criminals and good criminals, right? Good at pulling off jobs. They weren't good at handling art. They weren't professional art thieves. But in this, they like to parrot the fact that this is... Um, his only surviving seascape. It's his only seascape. It's his only and they say, one person says it and they say it over and over. There might be a boat with some waves, but this is a religious painting, right? And it's very interesting. It's from Matthew 8, 23 through 27, in which they get into the sea, the boat, and they're gonna go out onto what's the Lake of Nazareth, but it's they call it it's called the Sea of Galilee. It's an interesting thing because Though in reality, the way the, the land gets hot and cold and the water, and it, they do have these hum, tremendous storms. And so, uh, they went out on a boat, and he, Jesus falls asleep, and the storm comes, and they're going to drown, and they start getting all, all scared. And this is the perfect metaphor for this failed investigation. This is the perfect metaphor for the Gardner investigation. Here in the light, Rembrandt went into this. This really is a great painting. Here in the light... You see the men who were fishermen, the disciples like Peter, they were fishermen. They know the sea. They have their own ability as humans, right? And they're going to save that ship with their own human ability. But in reality, they're all going to drown. Over here, you got in the dark. Remember, I'm putting the dark, the most cowardly. They're afraid they're going to die. This one over here is throwing up over the ship. Only Jesus is calm. He's, he's the, the waves obey him. And he, he scolds him. He says, you men of little faith. You know, where's your faith? And... Uh, Here's Rembrandt, he painted himself right in, and he's looking right out at the viewer. So it's a really amazing painting. I really like uh, how he put, and I think it's a great metaphor for this investigation.